Aloha family, it's your boy Crypto Roots, and I'm back at it again with the knowledge, hitting y'all with the information, and uh, just staying up to date with crypto and the latest technology, and uh, I feel this information is important, I feel you guys should be aware of it, and uh, the sooner you're aware of this information, you can start making uh, d decisions that will help you uh, benefit from this information. All right, today I want to talk about smart cities. What the F is a smart city? Crypto roots, you keep playing games and you're just looking for attention and you probably smoke too much weed. You know what I'm saying? So get to the information, crypto roots, or don't be on camera talking anything. All right. Big concept. The goals of these smart city programs, like most other development programs, is to create an urban area that provides a high quality of life for residents and generates increased economic growth. The smart part is that it does with the help of data collection, using technologies to move cities towards modern standards of transient efficiency, public safety, and overall convenience. Currently, cities like Tokyo I, I can't even try to say that name. Singapore and Toronto rank some of the world's smartest cities by 2018. By 2050, two thirds of the world's population will live in cities. Okay? So we think cities are at their max capacity now. We haven't seen nothing yet. You, as the world becomes more online and um, things and resources start shifting, more people are going to come from the jungle, from the rural areas, from the mountaintops, and fill into these cities. And we sh now, or we should, should be prepared for this in influx of uh, more people in smaller areas. So how do we do this in a way where people are safe, less, less disease, less crime, what, what can we do? So that's, there's a whole concept of smart cities. And actually, you know what I'm saying? We really got to step it up as far as uh, renovating and innovating uh, technology as, as a whole for society. So what aspects of cities can be improved to turn them smart? Public transportation, OK? That's one of the biggest ones. That's one of the first ones pe people are uh, uh, urban planners and developers uh, are trying to to solve so for instance you get more accurate scheduling buses show up on time subways show up on time like to the exact I don't know second almost um, faster speeds yet fa uh, yet safer travel at faster speeds now there's this term and uh, uh, system uh, logistics, uh, transport like logistics, I forgot the, uh, the official name, um, where it's called the last mile service. So when it comes to transporting goods around the world, the hardest part or the, or, or the, the biggest struggle is the last leg of the transportation. Uh, it's called the last mile. So it can get overseas, no problem. It can fly overseas, no problem. But when it gets the, when these products or these, whatever you order gets to the last step, getting that product to your house, getting that product to the store or wherever, that is the hardest part. And that takes the most amount of energy and the most amount of planning. It's called the last mile uh, uh, service or um, where, most products don't get there on time due to the last leg of, uh, of the trip. So that's where a lot of uh, smart cities can help is, is fulfilling that last, that last part of the, uh, the transportation logistics um, more faster, more efficiently, okay? Now, power supply. Monitoring power supply having better way of understanding how much power is being used by the city from a minute to minute to a daily, weekly, monthly, year basis, okay? And those will help into saving 
uh, power, reducing power, and or rerouting energy automatically to other places in the city that so happen to need them, okay? I'm just giving you some brief examples of uh, how cities can be upgraded, okay? Sanitation, underground waste management systems, smart bins. So uh, we're gonna get into that, but basically we, they need, we need less traffic above ground, less pollution above ground, and able to have tunnels and different passageways underground to save, uh, to, to speed things up and to keep things more, less smells, less noise, less traffic, less garbage trucks, smart bins that detect uh, organic food, plastic recycle, or plain trash, and knows how to compact them and send them to different uh, facilities underground or, you know what I'm saying, however it can be as far as, uh, it, it's so customizable. So these are all just general ideas of what can, what can be done. Governance. Speeding. So for instance, with the cameras that are watching you everywhere you go and what you do, if you're speeding, they have this in California, have other places, they immediately take a picture of your license, right? And what happens, you can automatically get billed that ticket on your smartphone, no joke. Just for speeding, immediately you get billed a ticket. If you get caught literally, 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 you get a ticket straight to your smartphone, straight to your cell phone. Like, no joke, like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Another way is they, uh, these cameras with facial recognition and image recognition, they can monitor large crowds and understand the density of, of certain crowds in certain areas and either prevent or do what they can to, uh, you know what I'm saying, to, to monitor that crowd uh, if, if they feel uh, it need be. Traffic. So improved traffic speeds less congestion, faster uh, emergency response time, and available, up-to-date, real-time parking. You're not just driving around, waiting and hoping, wasting gas, looking for a parking spot, getting upset, getting, you know what I'm saying? Like, it'll literally, the uh, IOT sensors can detect, it's called smart curbs, and they can detect uh, when a space is open, how much space is open, and you can be notified in real time about parking spots available that you couldn't see two blocks over or a block ahead or something like that, you feel me? So these are just some of the ways smart cities can be upgraded to, to better improve uh, the lives of people who live in these cities. So what technologies do smart cities use, okay? Augmented reality. Now, you can use this augmented reality to view things underground that you could kind of shape out with your phone. You can kind of view inside buildings in a, in a way that displays images of what's inside or, or that can be used on people as well. So there's so many different forms of augmented reality. and I'll, I'll probably have to do a whole nother course on this but being able to put your phone over a car's engine and, and potentially see what is actually going wrong based on, the, uh, based on the graphics of your phone combined with the real graphics of reality. You can pinpoint problems, pinpoint certain issues uh, with augmented reality. It's dope, it's actually really cool. You know what I'm saying? Internet of Things, IOT. So you have things like smart street lights with motion sensors. So if it's at night or it's a road and no one's driving it, why not save energy and have those lights sh either dim, shut down or dim, and when people actually drive, the lights are turned on ahead of time so that it uses energy and people are safe. So it's all these little, little tiny kilowatt little tiny energies that you can save tremendously over time when it comes to uh, 
smart cities and uh, Internet of Things is one of the ways, It's not, if not the main, in my opinion, one of the main technologies that could really excel and push things forward when it comes to uh, the small little things. So parking sensors, real li like I said, real-time data with parking spots open. Sensors for dumpsters, when dumpsters are full, when, uh, you know what I'm saying, dumpsters, they can have their own uh, special spray or aroma that can prevent um, certain smells and nicer environments or, however, I'm, I'm kind of just brainstorming because there's are, there are, are currently different ways to do this, but every city and population is going to have their own wants and needs and budgets as well. So. Artificial intelligence, okay, such as machine learning. I guess augmented reality could be a form of artificial intelligence in some ways. Uh, machine learning, so like I said, smart curves that help sense uh, the presence of vehicles and can help you uh, not hit other vehicles as well as far as what's in your, uh, what's in your car and things that are, that are around you. Uh, image recognition, obviously cameras that will mo monitor cr uh, crowd density, uh, different types of uh, cars, SUV, small cars, being able to easily identify uh, its surroundings. Okay, the, uh, governments can monitor the exact movement. This is what they can do in Korea already. They can monitor the exact movement of any local registered vehicle. Like at all times, they know where your car is, and they can see it and have real-time data exactly what's going on. And we're going to get into the uh, more aspects of all this later, okay? Big data. We're going to get into big data towards the end. I got I got a few extra uh, websites I want to go through and show you af uh, after the end. You know what I'm saying? So, but big data essentially is really, really, really big data. But the thing about it, it's more data than we ever are used to dealing with on an everyday convention, even for software. So this is the new level of, of software and management when it comes to data, is big data. Big, 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 big data, okay? So yeah, apps, different apps that governments, governments will essentially, they will have their own apps. And you will have to have the app to red drive the car, have the app to register, or you know what I'm saying, get bill tickets in real time, or actually pay bills in real time, you can report crimes, crimes with your apps. You can handle DMV paperwork with the apps. You don't have to go and wait in line or do. Th you can, you know what I'm saying? So these are all the different things that, all the different forms of technology that smart cities can start using. All right. Oh yeah, self-driving cars. And other automated gigs will be mainstream. You know what I'm saying? And that helps reduce traffic. Uh, I got down here, yeah. Improvements in solar power, geothermal heat. Sorry about that. Fiber optic plugs and fire, uh, wireless 5G. So with all this, and you know what I'm saying? With all this together, combined together, you're seeing what, what can really be done with the smart city. Okay, some examples. Smart cameras measure, measures how many passengers are boarding and how quickly. They can tell the density of uh, movements of large crowds and small amounts of time. Smart sensors they act that are on the subways, on the buses, on restrooms that help pr prevent things from breaking down, costing more money in the long run, and they can uh, detect problems way earlier and help with the management of a lot of these systems. So that's where IoT comes in. Smart cameras come in with the artificial intelligence and image re recognition. Okay, all roads and traffic is monitored. For instance, if an accident happens, immediately a picture and a video is taken and recorded, and that that video can be used. Uh, this is what they do in Korea. Uh, that video, that accident, can be uh, distributed right away and alert other people through social media and other apps in real time. In real time, you can understand what's going on. You're not waiting, you're not online trying to wait for someone to write an article update or waiting for the news to come in. You can get information and access to what's going on in your city in real time um, with notifications and whatnot. 
Yeah, so real time status updates on accidents. And also, like, you'll be able to see if you're stuck in traffic, you'll be able to see what is the progress of the traffic being taken care of and worked on as far as the response times to the firefighters, the police departments. Like, like if you've seen like Amazon tracking a package, or if you ever had like a UPS, you can see the bullet points of the, the process of how it, from where it's going to how it gets to, to when it gets to you. It'd be the same thing for uh, accidents and emergencies is that like, yo, how long am I we waiting here? What's going on? I have no idea. Well, you'll be able to have a real idea to the, to the, to the second and monitor that on your phone, you know what I'm saying, if any emergency were to happen, okay? Uh, you can monitor uh, these, with all this technology, the government, the cities, they can monitor uh, where the police are going. They already do this in real time, but have more of an accurate account uh, when police are being called out. Uh, potential protests that are working up or coming up, such as, you know, whatever, gangs or thugs or just pro uh, political protesters. And, different levels of po uh, pollution that are going on in the, in the city. You know what I'm saying? D um, so these are some examples of how you can utilize all this technology in a smart city, okay? Also, yeah, better sewage management uh, from data collection. So they can monitor the health of the public by collecting uh, poop and pee samples from the sewage and be able to understand what's going on, what type of disease, what type of outbreak is most likely to happen or is happening or how to prevent it from happening. And you can monitor the health of the individuals based on uh, different samples you can collect and analyze. You feel me? So pros and cons, okay? Pros and cons. Pros, faster and safer transportation. You can't beat that. Less noise, less smells. And if you live in a city, you can't beat that. At least, you know what I'm saying? That's my opinion. Less pollution by underground trash tunnels operated by robots. Straight up. Robots handling trash and they're doing it underground. It causes less noise, less traffic, and less smells above ground. Faster emergency response times. This is crucial when it comes to emergencies. It's, in the end, it saves billions of dollars in long-term maintenance, okay? No joke, it saves billions and billions in long-term maintenance. Less disease, um, with that being said, just less disease, potentially, okay? Now let's look into some cons here, okay? And I, believe me, I got my own, but I'm trying to keep my personal opinions out of this. I would, want, I would like this to be more informational than opinionated. Okay, now the, obviously the biggest one is major, major privacy concerns. Big Brother is watching. Like, everything you do is being recorded one way or another in these smart cities. L just facts. So, um, that's, a, that's, a, that's one of the biggest ones as far as preventing this from actually becoming a reality. But it's already a reality to some degree, you know what I'm saying? And it, so another one is going to cost. To, to, in order to save money, you got to spend money in some a lot of cases. So it's going to cost billions of dollars to invest to even get this infrastructure functional and flowing for it to actually have all these pros effects going on. Okay. Control over resources. They'll be able to monitor and control the resources. And if you're not in control of them or the people aren't able to get a hold of them, such as water, such as power, then these put these put, he puts these cities, whoever runs these cities, in major, major control, as if they aren't already, but even more. You know, and we've never really seen anything like this. We've never combined this type of technology all together and implemented on a large scale uh, in, a, in, a, in a production uh, setting where... So we actually have no idea how successful this can or can't be. So that's, that's another, uh, another con. You know what I'm saying? So these are just, it's just to give you a broader perspective on, uh, on smart cities. Okay? City cameras have to, oh yeah, for instance, city cameras have detected you are smoking in the prohibited zone. 
they can tell if you're smoking a cigarette, maybe even marijuana, in a no smoking zone, right up. Your, your local government officials have identified you smoking in a no smoking zone. You will be fined a penalty of $300 that will automatically be deducted from your bank account. If funds are insufficient, you will have to pay an additional fee and or cover your overdraft fees. Uh, and you will be texted a receipt. Like, for real. Like, for real. So these, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is the potential of what can happen in a smart city. And this is everyday stuff. And this is how the government and the city will collect its funds. You know what I'm saying? So... These are just something to be aware of, like, you know what I'm saying? 1984. So it's a new model of compatibility, okay? It will require many sectors to come together like they've never done before. We're talking about contractors, workers, builders. We're talking about software developers different hardware companies, different cloud services, different labs, different robotics labs. You're talking about for this to actually be a real success, you, you're gonna need many different fields and professions simultaneously working together on a scale we haven't seen before. So collecting data from, so another thing is that collecting data from rideshare providers such as Uber and Lyft in exchange for allowing them to operate in the city has already been pro proven lucrative for growing cities. So this has already been happening. So people are like, yo, the cities are like, all right, we'll allow you Uber, we'll allow you Lyft, but you gotta share that data with us. You gotta share all that data with us, and then you're allowed to operate in our city and make your bread, only if you share that data. So that gives more and more insight onto how your city, what's going on in your city and um, you know the services and uh, businesses running your city, okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, these companies just don't finish when the job's done. Like I would say they do now, for the most part. They will actually have to continually stick around and work together to maintain the infrastructure. All these developers, all these companies, they can't just be like, oh, I'm done, I built the house and I'm done. It's like, nah, this is a long-term contract you kind of gotta be in, you know what I'm saying, and work with other uh, fields that you probably never worked for. So yes, the city is essentially outsour outsourcing its operations. The city could hire these people and train these people to do all this, but it'd be easier to have already established companies and professionals uh, to work on the city and then have them work together. So it's, it's, a, it's a new business model, it's a new way, and we have, you know, it's, it's still in the process, but these are, it's, we got, we're stepping the game up. We're stepping the game up as far as uh, creating smart cities, okay? So some key points to consider. Challenges. All right, yeah, 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 okay. So some key points to consider is if you're building a smart city from the ground up, it really has no culture and no history to back that up and actually in some ways be desirable for people to want to stay there. That's, that's something most people haven't really dealt with. They've either grew up in New York and been around New York and you're having these emotional attachments and histories to these places and that's what uh, drives a lot of people to stay there. But if you have a brand new city, it's not the same, it's just not gonna be the same. So how are we so sociologies, uh, socially, uh, gonna, gonna adapt to a, a place, a city that's man-made that has no previous culture? attached to it. Another thing is your city may already be on its way to being a smart city. If you live in New York, if you live in LA, if you live in Dallas in certain places, you may already be seeing the improvement and you can call it gentrification or whatnot. You may already see improvement in, in uh, the way things are built, uh, the cameras, the, uh, the, cleanly, the cleanliness of these cities. You may already see a city you know, that's being trans, uh, renovated into a smart city. Like you may, like I said, you may be better off in a city that's being renovated to a smart city than one being built from the ground up. Because the thing about it, unknown problems such as water power, unpredictability, it, it, all these things are starting, 
unpredictable in a fresh new city. I, I forgot the name. There's a city Bill Gates contributed to in Arizona. I think it's called Buckeye or something, where it's in the middle of a desert. It's almost like a Vegas. Like you're just starting a city with the plan for it to be a tech city, but you have no idea how to how how the city can adapt to its surroundings. And if something were to happen, and you built this whole city and there's no water, there's a fire, there's something due to uh, its environment, you you just it's unpredictable. So you may be better off in a city that already has been there such as these major cities, and then have, and watch that or be there while it's being innovated. So that kind of, you, you have culture, you have history, and you're aware of how the environment, even outside of your city, works and the weather and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Ultimately, it's about the collection on, of your data as a whole. So this whole smart city shit is all about, and, ma and managing the whole smart city, it's all about collecting as much data as possible analyzing the data, using data uh, vi visualizations. All this is, I would say, a form of control to get, to get more control. Um, you know, So it's really all about the data at the end of the day, and that's what I stress about to you guys. Protecting your data, uh, monetizing your data, owning your data, even, you know what I'm saying? Storing all your data. All right, it's up to the government and tech companies on how they, uh, how, I, 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 sorry, I spelled that wrong. How much and to who the data can be accessed. I apologize about that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So the, so the people, the governments, the cities that collect all this data, they can and choose to allow other companies or people or whatever to use these data. It's called an API. If you're, if you're a software developer, you can access certain APIs. Now, how much of that data is completely up to them. But with the more data they release to the public, um, the uh, the more likely, the more likely, businesses can be started. That data can be analyzed and used to create entrepreneurs and local businesses within that area. You know, so it's up to the big boys, to the big brother, to uh, to to how much data uh, of the city they're going to allow to to the public. So cities are more likely to be modular. Basically, think of a city like a big different parts of the city like Lego blocks. So you got this section of the street that is interchangeable, it has different chips, sensors, you got this part of the building, you got this park, you got this under, so it's like Lego blocks. So it's not like, yo, we gotta crush this whole sh uh, thing down. We gotta, it'll be these pieces and parts of the city will be interchangeable, upgradable, flexible, you know what I'm saying, movable. And that'll help in the long-term uh, maintenance versus having to get uh, all the construction, tear apart the road, cement the road back, and uh, you know, slowing down traffic, and da 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 da. So these cities are meant to be very fixable uh, in a ways like Lego blocks. Yeah, easily upgradable and interchangeable. Okay? Now, Sidewalk Labs, okay? It's by Google. So it's Google, Alpha, aka Alphabet, Sidewalk Labs is the Alphabet Inc. Urban Innovation Organization. Its goal, to, its goal is to improve urban or, uh, infrastructure through technology solutions, tackle, tackle issues such as cost, living, efficient transportation, and energy uses. So Google is coming out already with their own smart city, straight up. And some of the features of the smart city that I found like impressive is like heated bike lanes, uh, which melt ice so that people can can commute outside even in the winter because it's going to be in Toronto and very large transparent tarps in between buildings So the goal is to make it feel comfortable and like spring all throughout the year and So I'm like yo Yeah designed to keep people comfortable outdoors all year round. You feel me? so real quick I'm gonna I'm go over, nah, real quick, I'm gonna go over, uh, I wanted to skim through. So if you go to sidewalklabs.com, this is Google's uh, subsidiary, and they give you some detail uh, about what's going on. So here's another article. 
Sidewalk Labs has outlined its Toronto tomorrow's master plan, right? To turn a parcel of the city's waterfront into a neighborhood of the future. You know what I'm saying? So I'll leave these links down in the description so you can check them out. But Google is planning to build its own smart city in Toronto. And yes, there's a lot of concerns. There's, there's a lot of uh, backlash, you know, because Google wants to uh, pretty much control and monitor this whole city. And we're not going to go into it right now. But here's the plans of this in Toronto. They already own all this land, and they got plans to, um, to build one of the world's smart cities from, from scratch. And uh, there's a lot of issues going on, but this is an example of, of Google, okay? So I'll leave the links down in the descriptions, in the description, so y'all can check it out. Um, now, all right. So here's my personal thoughts, okay? It's more opportunity than you could ever imagine is already here and is only getting bigger to be a software developer and or entrepreneur for any of these industries. I'm so grateful that I chose to become a software developer without really even know, you know what I'm saying? Like I went for it and I'm, I'm glad I understand how to program computers at this day and age. That is why I started this channel is to, to motivate and inspire people about technology and the opportunities that lay ahead. It's up to you, but the world is gonna be passing you by fast, you know? And I just have a state of mind where I wanna seize the opportunity, I want to make the most, I wanna uh, be in, uh, having the freedom and the time to do the things I wanna do. So, it's got me excited. I'm already thinking of apps. I'm already thinking of ideas of how I can get into the game. What type of different uh, software I can design. How I can use IoT devices and, my, and then resell that idea. You feel me? Like I'm just thinking big, big boss type, type uh, software type, uh, software tycoon type shit. You feel me? Like I said, perfect time to build a startup. And you're more likely to get funding with an idea that's going to improve smart cities than any very any other form. Like there's going to be venture capitalists, there's going to be government grants, there's going to be all types of uh, funding backing you up or backing people up. Like please start your own business. Please come up with the solution. Please come up with something valuable we can use to improve these cities or how you know however. So and I feel I feel it's just. Is the time to strike is now. There's no time to wait. Start learning. Start building. Start developing. Start programming. All right? Start saving. Yes, I, I'm ahead of myself. I don't even know what I write down sometimes. Start learning. Start saving. Start planning and organizing for your piece of that pie. No joke. Now, I didn't put here my personal thoughts as far as privacy. You already know my privacy. Check out my data, uh, my data uh, protection course. I'm obviously, I got my cryptography course. All, I'm all about protecting my data. But I can choose, I can monetize that data. So this is a really what it's about. It's about monetizing the data, monetizing your data. You know what I'm saying? And so privacy concerns, personally, I live in the jungle, I live in nature, only because I really don't like Big Brother control over cities and stuff. Um, but as the world's moving towards cities, I can, be, I can personally profit in the jungle for building an app that people use in the city. So I'm, for based on my lifestyle, I understand that it's, it's all about control with these governments in these cities, so I choose to stay out of a city personally. Uh, there's conveniences for being in a city, so I use the cities like vacation. And, um, but I'm already thinking of how I can come up with apps profit from them without living in a city, me personally. Uh, and if you do enjoy living in a city, then this is the time to, to actually start figuring out, the, look at, start looking at the problems around you in your city and start thinking of ways you can improve them um, with a team of people and uh, start a business. Technology made populations possible 
Technology made large populations possible. Large populations now make technology indispensable. So we can't move on without this technology. We can't improve as a whole. The more people are being born, the more food is being consumed, the more people move into cities, we can't separate ourselves from this technology. It'll end up killing us if we don't have a phone to make an emergency response call or, you know what I'm saying, or report crimes in real time. Like, it's, it's too late now. It's too late now. It's too late now. So, you, you know, there's no other choice but to adapt and to, to, to make the most out of it as the world moves more and more digital. Okay? Aloha. I appreciate it, family. It's a quick little lecture. I wanted, I've been wanting to do this for a while now, Smart Cities. Holla at me, Crypto Roots. I'm here to teach my folks all about cryptocurrency, more specifically my people in the hood who are looking for a way out. You know what I'm saying? And I, I didn't know nothing about programming. I didn't know nothing about computers, but now I'm a beast and I'm start, I'm going for it. I'm a software developer, JavaScript, Python, you know what I'm saying? Full stack, Vue.js, Django, MongoDB, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just, whew, I'm going for it. I ain't slowing down for nobody. So if you really want to keep up to date, if you really want to know more about how to utilize this technology, how to profit from this technology, uh, how to create new opportunities for yourself, hit me up because I do consulting an hour, you know what I'm saying? Uh, $25 an hour, mentorship, $75 a month, courses, anywhere from $25 to $50, and boot camp, two, two month boot camp, like to get you, I'm, I'm just, whatever I can do to help you guys learn and y'all can help me in the, uh, in the meantime to support me to keep, keep me pushing and motivated to do this, do this information, I'm, I'm with it, I'm with it. So, uh, if you got any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, leave them in the, uh, leave them in the comments and, uh, much love and aloha, I appreciate it.